ability to be at the youth lake last weekend. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it very much. I recovered about Thursday, so that was, uh, but it, it really was a great experience. And it speaks volumes that a community of faith like ours has developed our young people into worship leaders like that. And it's uh, certainly an honor to be part of that. This morning, Jesus is coming to us by way of another parable, a story told with the familiar themes and objects in such a way that his hearers will be able to understand the point that he is trying to make. That's what a parable does, right? He tells a lot of parables and uses frequently uses hyperbole, hyperbole and exaggeration to kind of focus the point of what it is that he wants to talk to. He uses a different technique in the parable today. He uses a plot twist that we don't see coming. It's very unexpected for his hearers as well. So one of the things that I want to make crystal clear out of the gate, first things first this morning, is that what Jesus is talking about is the kingdom of heaven in this parable. He's not actually talking about landowners and, and day laborers. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. First and foremost, we must keep that in mind. It's intentionally easy, and Jesus was a master of doing this. It's intentionally e uh, uh, to uh, get bogged down in the details of the workers and the landowners and all that business. But Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven. It says that first verse. The kingdom of heaven is alive. With that said, we start off with a landowner looking for workers to help with the vineyard harvest. It's a familiar theme. It's a familiar situation for anybody that's lived in Nebraska more than seven minutes. It's, we just know how that works. It's familiar to us. We live in Nebraska, and harvest is something that we understand is something that is going on. It's close and personal. My wife, Laura, and I live in a house that's surrounded on three sides by, uh, depending on the season or the, the rotation, soybeans or cornfield. You can't drive anywhere without going through fields, right? It's what we do in Nebraska. In particular, many of us have seen uh, James Arthur Vineyard's ads for help in the fall to harvest grapes. It's a, kind of a, a, an annual seasonal right kind of thing. We even have a fun run in James Arthur Vineyard as we uh, raise money for Kicks for Kids, our shoe uh, ministry. So it's, there's just lots of connections to be made with that. It's a visual we can get behind. And that's how Jesus uses parables. Like the people listening to Jesus, we can very easily picture this scenario in our minds, and that's the beauty of it. So the landowner is out scouting some day laborers to help him with the harvest. He finds a bunch right out of the gate. He sends them into the uh, vineyard to start picking grapes, promising that he'll pay them the usual daily wage. Based on the timing of the others, uh, I'm going to say this was happening about 6 o'clock in the morning. The laborers head out and everything is moving along just fine. And the landowner decides to go back into town. And he sees some guys standing there in the corner looking for work, and he says, I'll pay you whatever is right. And he sends them into the field, and they start doing their work and all that. You'd think this would be enough, and, you know, every, away everyone goes all happy and whatnot. But as uh, the thing with grapes is there's a fairly narrow window of picking the grapes when they are at their optimum uh, quality for wine. And so the landowner goes back into town two more times, gathering up more day laborers to go pick grapes in the vineyard, promising to pay them whatever is right. Everyone finishes their day of picking grapes and lines up to get whatever is right. Strangely, they line up in reverse order to get their wages. Here's where the plot thickens. The setup and phrasing have all reinforced our preconceived notion that the workers who worked the entire day would be getting their uh, previously promised daily wage, which they ultimately do. Everyone else will be getting whatever is right, which we assume to be some sort of prorated amount based on the amount of time that they work, because that's only right. Whatever. But not so fast there, Carl. Our preconceived notions are incorrect. And not because the workers got all got paid the same uh, amount, but because we likely forget that this story is talking about the kingdom of heaven. That's the masterful stroke that Jesus uses to get us all wound up. 
Some of you may be hearing this parable for the first time. Some of you may be hearing it for the 101st time. Either way, how do you react in hearing all the laborers got paid at the exact same rate? Did you think to yourselves, well, that's not right? Or did you think, yes, they all got paid the same? If you reacted with joy that they all got paid the same, that's great. Good for you. Seriously. That's a, that's a good thing. But I suspect that notion is in the minority. We don't like the fact they all got paid the same. Which is terribly ironic. Because they, nobody got cheated. Everybody got paid what they were due. The full day workers got paid a full day's wage. That's what they were promised. That's what they expected. That's what they got. Instead of being happy about getting the full day's wage that they've been promised and received, they were angry about what others have been paid. Which is also terribly ironic because what the others got paid has no bearing on the first group that goes out. There's probably an entire sermon based on that fact. And that the first group that went out should mind their own business. But we're not going there right now. We don't have time to. It's a sad commentary on society then and society today that we react the way we do. It's sad because we react the way we react. This story is not based on picking grapes. It's based on the kingdom of heaven and who gets in. And spoiler alert, who gets into heaven is not based on the amount of work they do. It's based solely on the one who went to the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. It's based on Jesus hanging on a cross until he was dead and buried and our sins buried with him. It's based on the Christ who rose from the dead three days later, opening up the promise of eternal life for each and every one of us. We don't deserve it. It's not fair. It's not right. Whatever. It's the grace of God. And to God be the glory. Amen. Would you please stand as you're comfortable and able to continue worship and song.